Hey, Andy, got to love technology. You get to laugh at me with my reading glasses on over the internet. Watch this, but um, this is a little essay I did. It's called Visiting the Scene of the Crime, and it's really the real story behind the restaurant. This is one that we, we don't write about on our website, but it's really it's about front porch where a lot of this stuff started. It's called Visiting the Scene of the Crime. Last night we visited the scene of the crime, our private think tank, refuge, meditation center, musical stage, breakfast nook, lunch spot, outdoor cafe, family therapy office, park vista garden, the place where we first cooked the idea of opening a restaurant. I know I wrote on our website that it happened we were driving to a raw food restaurant in the city. True, the idea popped in that little beige Toyota Corolla. Why don't we just open our own place? It was said for sure, I was there. Here we were just going to some place on a Friday night, and it's a butt-busting 90-minute trip. All to have a quick meal, get back in the car, and go home. Crazy, yeah, we thought. Why are we driving so far for something to eat which we could make at home? The age-old conundrum, and here we're stupid enough to decide the best solution to the problem is to open our own restaurant. Let's consider people who would do that. For example, a guy takes his family to the zoo, and he doesn't turn around in the van in the parking lot afterwards. He says, hey, I'm thinking we could get some animals. Maybe put some pens in the house in the backyard. I don't know, I'm thinking an elephant and a donkey at least. They get along, right? Save us all the driving. We can charge a little money. What do you say, kids? Who wants to open our very own zoo? Not normal people. Not even close. These are masochists. People who sit on a porch having a little conversation, arrange some food pretty on a plate, say that tastes good. Ma'am, you say it's raw? Bring it out, sit down, everyone eats. There's a lot of talking and laughing, and Danny saying things that I want him to publish, him not getting around to it, leaking it out in little bits on Facebook, an email, a shotgun approach more, not wadding it into a single cartridge, shoot it into a book, get some legs on all those words. You run a couple courses out, the people looking up from the bench or that lawn chair, wherever they find themselves, hey, look, Danny's handing me another plate of food and I'm laughing about something or other and everyone's having a good time. So you're thinking, why not just spend the whole day doing this? Two or three times a month, have someone over for a weekend, sit down, we made you something we think you like, it's not enough. Sure, there's cleaning and extra dishes and a lot of extra work, but it's worth it. Sitting out on that porch, having a grand old time. You're like this entertainment glutton. I want to do the whole people food thing all day long. Let's stop screwing around with the day jobs, Danny. You're not getting any younger. And I've had my fill of sitting in front of a computer, writing out specs, listening to some lady go on about cabinet handles. Should I get the brass one with the thing on it? Or do you like this one? It looks like a spoon. All those nights sitting out on the porch, laughing, eating, swatting mosquitoes, and talking about things you thought you were only going to say if you ever got around to seeing someone to talk about things you don't usually bring up. But boy, it feels good. Like sighing. Finally letting it out in the air. Not so big and scary now. Traveling up into the night, a thousand feet beyond the porch, settling in with the clouds and scattering out amongst the stars, taking a long ride to the end of the universe. A little speck now, really. Putting it in better perspective, maybe. That speck and that big endless thing that doesn't have a fence. An end of the universe wall. And you get there and you stand and look at it and sure, it says it right there. End of the universe. And you start wondering, what's on the other side of the wall? The place where your imagination ended, it feels a little scary. So you find a ladder. You carry it over and put it up against the wall at the end of the universe, clunk. And you look up, and you take that first step up, a little two-handed pull-up, and another, and another. Pretty soon you're up on top. You swing your legs over and sit up, and you see absolute nothingness. It's not dark, and it's not white. It's clear. Nothing to see, and it's quiet. Nothing to hear. No refrigerator hum or car noise in the distance. No little bird on your shoulder working a seed, watching you type. No noise at all. So quiet you don't even think about talking. Nothing to see, nothing to hear, nothing to say, and then nothing to think about. You're just right here, wherever you are right now. You close your eyes and a little smile plays on your lips and you don't ever remember feeling this happy and relaxed. 
And then even that thought drifts away, and you're just this nothingness. And you're not the least bit concerned, just sucking it all up. And you realize that there's nowhere else to go, no one to become. You already are who you are ever going to be, and you've always been. And it's nothing to do with your history, your story, all the things you've thought, felt, and had happened to you. All your accomplishments and all that you didn't accomplish. It doesn't mean anything. It never did. Just now getting that. And that's okay. There's no reason to become somebody. That would mean you aren't already something terrific. A person taking breaths in and out, each moment precious, just as it comes. Not filtered through their past, not held up against someone's story and judged, compared, criticized, feared, worried about, grieved over, dismissed as baloney, or another million other distractions. This is the peaceful place you slip into when you finally get to sleep. When you go outside and take in a breath and feel the sun on your face and close your eyes and smile. Pure feeling, without thoughts or words attached. This great big feeling that's nothing to feel. Nothing to feel but good. Have fun with that, Andy. I love you and I'll talk to you soon.